All right. So we've got our uh, binary rasters as zeros and ones over here. And these are kind of the large files, the uh, 190 megabyte files. And we've got our 50 megabyte um, kind of smaller um, data depth rasters, except the only problem is that these have no data and ones. And no data and one is fine for some tools, but not for the raster calculator, which I'm going to show you. So um, <laughs> in this particular case, because we're just doing a logical and statement, you could pump all of these four things into this tool called raster boolean and. Um, and this is kind of nifty, actually. If you use this guy, you can just plug in all your rasters like this. I'm going to show you. It's really fast here. We'll just do it anyway. Um, we can say treat no data values as false. And I'm just, you know, I just like, come on, guys. Can't you have like the same thing in raster calculator? Because that'd be awesome. But they don't. So um, you can click that. Um, it doesn't really matter. But, you know, here we can choose byte so that it's small again, right? The default was float32, but we can go to byte. Um, so we could just do that, and I think it's going to run our entire analysis if we try that. So I'm going to just call this um, um, site constraints, and this is kind of our answer. Uh, so we just say that, and let's just run it. And it goes really fast. When we run this raster calculator, you're going to see that it doesn't go nearly as fast. Um, cool. Yeah, that, that looks like our answer. And, you know, if we really want to check what we do, is we just kind of go to an area and we're just going to turn on our booleans and just see kind of visually yep it looks like it's done a pretty darn good job finding all of the zeros everywhere oh that's the county that's the trim yeah the, the trim worked and then the topo definitely worked too so I mean that's a great tool it's fast um, it's done <laughs> so I'm going to provide you with these right here because it works so fast but um, conceptually, I want you to see how you can use these guys in Raster Calculator because um, I think it's kind of important. Um, so if we wanted to use these, we would go up to Raster Calculator. And, um, you know, if you're going to do a subselection for a town or something like that, um, you know, maybe later you, you want to do um, a multiple criteria analysis where maybe you add them to see what the score is you know one plus one plus one plus one plus one where where is the you know where are there good and bad things and how many times do they partake kind of like the um, the co-occurrence map we did last week but um, maybe a suitability map is what we'd call it in this case and in that case you could just add these together right that plus that plus that plus that but we're dealing with constraints not um, not suitable or unsuitable just whether we can or cannot so for the for that, what we're going to do is we can take these and we can just multiply them together like this. And um, I'm hoping at this point you can kind of understand that we also what is you know what is the other thing we could do here? We could use the and right. Ultimately, um, this is performing a multiplication operation, but we can also make a logical operation because if our inputs are zeros and ones the raster calculator is going to understand those as true and false. And so it shouldn't really matter either way you want to do it. I'll run it as um, the multiplication, and I think you're going to see that it, it does take a while. And <laughs> it says output CRS, unknown CRS. And I, I should have gone over this. Um, and um, that's because some of the Saga tools, I'll just show you for a second, don't, they don't always link up to the coordinate system properly. Um, I think that's in the newer ones. For some reason, the S grid that that file format's not linking up. So see, this is a TIFF, and it has our EPSG three two one four five. This one is one that we used a Saga tool for, and it's an S dat. And you can see that this um, inside the brackets is empty. Now, because we're in a project and we've been using the same coordinate system the whole way through, I, I know that the tool will run, um, but if, if you ever see those empty brackets and you're worried about it, you can always go and under your source it says unknown CRS, but of course here we see, oh, actually it is kind of choosing the right one. Um, but you can just reassign this projection. And so in, in ARC that would be called um, assign projection, which is a tool you can run, but in, in Q you can just kind of set it. 
So if you're worried about it, you can just go here and just choose because we know that's the one we've been using the whole way through. Um, you don't ever want to do this if you're unsure of the projection. You don't ever want to assign a projection or a coordinate system to a file if you don't know for sure. But our practice so far has been to use the same exact coordinate system for every piece of data. So I can just do that. And um, and it's and so now if I hover over this, see now it's showing the proper projection. So so now hopefully when I open up raster calculator, yeah, see it is no longer questioning what the coordinate system is. So put my statement in there and I'm going to, um, I'll just put this one out at this level, site constraints. And this one's going to be similarly a couple hundred megabytes and it's going to take longer to run. All right. So there's our answer. And um, if we wanted to compare the answers, that might be kind of fun, right? Maybe we want to see copy style. Let's see. Paste style. So this is our answer from the raster calculator. And this is our answer up here from the Boolean and statement. And they're identical, which is what we want to see. So that's great. So two tools, one, you know, if you know you're going to do a Boolean um, and or a Boolean or, there's two specific tools for that that run a little bit faster. But if you if you play your cards right and you use zeros and ones or other types of numeric um, kind of categories, then the raster calculator lets you do a whole bunch of stuff with it um, that, that's more complicated than that, and it's kind of fun. So, so that's the entire analysis for um, what's buildable and what's not buildable. And now I want to show you a summary tool. It's called Zonal Statistics, because ultimately what we really care about. I'm gonna I'm gonna actually just kind of get rid of these guys now. And um, what we'd really like to do is we'd like to summarize this by parcel, right? So you might be like, okay, well there's all this developable land and that's great. So why don't we just do somewhere in the valleys here? Um, well, the problem with this stuff, obviously, is that people own land and, and they, they don't own land in other places. So we have to only look at contiguous parcels that are might potentially be available for purchase. So if the goal is to find um, perhaps the highest number or the, the greatest variety of, um, of, of individual parcels with enough buildable land, then really what we want to do is we want to look at kind of this parcels for Chittenden County and we want to do something where we summarize this buildable area per parcel and um, our range is is 15 to 20 acres um, so it can have more than 20 acres but whatever we buy you know unless the landowner wants to subdivide the lot whatever we buy over 20 acres is just icing on the cake we can't really do more than 20 acres for development so um so i just want to show you uh, if we make this hollow and you know let's make this red or something so we can see it and if we to zoom in here you know our goal is to kind of figure out and find um, where are places that we know we're going to get a lot of a lot of buildable area right so here's an area where of course um, we can kind of see that Yep, there is there is a big buildable spot, but you know perhaps it's not enough acreage with all this unbuildable stuff next to it. Like this, this parcel right here is is not very buildable either. And um, we've completed our analysis, but for your your work this week and for next Monday, uh, we're going to add some other potential layers that would be considered that should be considered um, in your in your analysis. Um, you know, this is most likely a flood zone, probably. Um, and there's going to be some other things you can kind of take into account, whether, you know, how is it zoned, um, what is the land use, and and try to decide whether or not we should even look at certain parcels. And it, it might seem like, well, you also can't buy parcels that aren't for sale, uh, which is true. You know, most of, the, most of the times I've done this type of analysis for a client, they send me parcels they know are for sale, and I do a, a local analysis that's a much higher resolution than this. You know, these are 10 meter pixels. We usually do a two meter pixel um, and a very detailed topographic map for each parcel. Um, and, but we know they're for sale already. I, I have worked for someone before who instead, um, if there's a set of prime parcels for some particular use, 
uh, you can send a mailing. You know, you send a mailing out to uh, people, you know, different folks, and you say, if you're thinking about selling your land, like here's a potential use that it could be used for. Are you interested? Are you interested? And then it, it's a very different way of approaching kind of development, but um, you know, it doesn't usually produce too many fruits, but it, it is something I've seen people do before. Um, so we're going to just imagine it's that latter version where we don't know what's for sale because we don't have access to the databases. Um, I mean, if you wanted to, you could go to Zillow or something like that and download some spreadsheets of things that are for sale. But I think, I think for our purposes, we'll just assume <laughs> everything's for sale and we'll just do a kind of a multiple criteria evaluation of, of what is the best one to get. So, um, how do we come up with an acreage per parcel? Uh, it's, it, it's not as complicated as it seems. Um, there's a tool called Zonal Statistics. And Zonal Statistics is great because it just will take a raster and a, um, and a vector polygon file, and you can just create, it's just like a cookie cutter. Uh, you just take these cookie cutters and it will give you summaries of what's below it in the in the raster. So Zonal Statistic asks for a raster layer and which which band, of course, we only have a single band raster here. And then um, what is the vector layer containing the zones? And that's our parcels. And then it just puts, it says, all right, give give me a column and I'll, I'll pump out some statistics. Um, and what we can ask it to do are any number of things. Because we have a binary, um, all I care about are the count and the sum. And I'm wondering if you can kind of guess why. The count is going to give us the total number of uh, pixels kind of within this entire parcel, right? So that would be the count. Now, in theory, if I took the count of cells and multiplied it by the grain, which they're 10 meter by 10 meter pixels, right? I'm going to come up with a, a very basic estimate. So 10 by 10 is 100 square meters per pixel. And so um, 100 square meters times the count is going to be the approximate total square meters of the entire parcel. Now the sum would be, it would just add all of those pixels. And so for every zero, that's going to not be included. And for every one, it'll be included once. So the sum, if I multiply the sum of all of the pixels times 100 square meters. That should give me the total buildable square meters per, um, you know, per parcel. So we're just going to do that. It's pretty fast. So we're going to run zonal statistics, raster layer is site constraints, and we're going to do um, parcels in county or the zones. You know, whenever a tool tags fields onto the end of an attribute table. I always like to give it some kind of some kind of indicator. So I did an underscore in this case. So we don't care about the average. We just care about the sum and the count. I'm going to say OK. And let's just hit Run. All right, let's see if it worked. We open up our attribute table. And I'm going to just scroll over here. Good, it looks like we do have some version of a sum and account. Let's just pick an example, a couple examples, and see how successful it was. So we'll pick a simple example. According to our analysis, this has a count of 735 pixels, which, you know, if we were to just go um, acres per square meter, or something like that. It's um, I think it's 4046.86. Yeah. So um, what we really want to know is how many acres is 735 times 100. So that'd be 73500. So 73500. So this should be about eight, just over 18 acres. This whole parcel. So let's measure it just to see if we agree with ourselves. That this is just over 18 acres. And we're going to switch to acres. Yeah, that's not too bad. I, you know, with a little wiggling here and there, just over 18 acres. So I think that's, that's pretty fair. Similarly, let's look at the buildable area, which um, is going to be 
that area minus this about. So we've got uh, about two acres that it's saying is not buildable. So 652, let's see, 652, 16, yeah. So 16 is two less than 18. So I, I feel pretty good about our general, our generalized statements here that, um, you know, two acres aren't buildable, but that looks like there's about uh, 16 that are on an 18 acre parcel. So. So I'm going to leave you with that. I think you should know how to use raster calculator, you know, um, pretty well at this uh, raster calculator and the field calculator in your attribute table. So I, I hope, you know, I have confidence that you guys will be able to uh, use your field calculator, translate these into some acreages, and um, and then you know, off to it. Um, enjoy the lab this week. It's it's definitely more GIS heavy. Um, I am going to upload one more video that demonstrates how to use uh, a 3D visualizer if you want this week, but um, you can also stick to Illustrator or Tableau if you want. Um, just more tools to throw into the pile. All right, thanks. We'll um, see you later in the next video.